You know, I think a lot of us get defeated when we are told no as women. And no doesn't exist. No is just somebody being like, next, next, keep going. I want every young girl to know to keep going. There's going to be a yes, and you can do it. You know, a lot of us just need to be seen, and we need to be heard, and we need someone else to believe in us. And it'll all come. But you have to just keep going. Where are your dreams? Are you constantly pushing them down, keeping them at bay, pretending they don't exist? What do you say to that small voice that is your dream, begging to be let out? It weighs heavy for a reason. That time of year has come, you say, this is my year, this is my time, this is my dream. Let me write it down and go after it. Go fucking after it. You only need your own permission. Make your dream reality. Whatever it is, quitting your job, getting fit, traveling, make it happen. Remember, anything is possible. You control your life, the ability to create the life that you want, the ability to make possible happen. You're creating this life one day at a time. You create whether you feel beautiful, whether you love yourself, whether you believe in possibility. Whether you're going to chase your dreams and make them reality, no dream is too big. Never forget that you belong here. Tell me why they sleeping on me. What's up, beautiful people? My name is Letitia Roll, and I am an entrepreneur. I'm a podcast host, and I'm a cool ass woman. I'm here with Ruben Rojas on Live Through Love to talk about how I learned how to step into my power, how I learned how to use my voice, the power of becoming who I am and owning who I am. Uh, Ruben and I have some good fun talking about love and how I learned how to live through it. Well, Leticia. Yes. El Boogie. What up? Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Coming into the studio. It's actually really beautiful. Thank you. I didn't know you on the whole block, Urban. You know, when they allow me to just put my name on things, I assume it's mine now, right? You're a humble man. Let's just say that. Okay? Love is everywhere. It is. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Now, no, now we're just going to talk about how we could continue to spread love. Yes. But with your voice and how you're doing it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. living a life through love. For me, living a life through love means living a life where there are no judgments. There is living a life when you're supporting and uplifting people and supporting them on their journeys. I think love and life coincide, but everybody has their own different interpretation of what love actually is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So to me, that's what love means. Like truly seeing someone and truly knowing like you are you and it's okay. There's no actually good and bad. It's mm -hmm. all good and bad. That shit just made up in our head. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I love you and I see you for who you are and I accept all the parts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's living through love is really living that, accepting that, and owning who you are, mm -hmm. all parts. I love that. Thank you. Easier said than done, though, right? Oh, 100%. We live in a world that objectifies us, a world that shows us more fear than love, mm -hmm. a world that says we're not good enough, yes. we're not worthy, we mm -hmm. don't belong here unless X, Y, and Z. So how are you navigating those conversations of self-love and maybe body image? and? Yeah. Well, I like to always say I, I am in this world, but I'm not of this world, mm. right? So I don't have to live by these stereotypes of what a woman should be, what I have to look like, what my hair has to be like, what my body has to be like. Bullshit. You know, society is this made up thing. Mm -hmm. God did not create that. Mm. 
Mm-mm. God didn't put me here on this earth to be like this figure that the society has created, what mm-hmm. the magazines like portray or these movies. It's no, mm. but it took me a while. I'm 34 now. So it took me 34 years to get to a place where you have to find out who you are. Because mm. if you don't know who you are, you're going to fall into this bullshit, these stereotypes, the you wanting to look like the girl on Instagram or you're comparing yourself to these people on TV or on the magazines. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it takes a lot of work. It's not easy because since we're children, we're shaped from our parents, from society, they're shaped from their parents, from their parents. So it's this ancestral lineage that's passed down to us. And it's up to you to kind of break that and be like, yo, I'm living for myself. I'm owning who I am and who I am might not look like the girl next door. Mm -hmm. And I don't care because I love who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing I always say is there's good and evil and, you know, to stay in the good. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in good and bad. Um, but we live in a world where there is evil and it is, it's unfortunate. So I think people should honor the good. I, I believe I walk in the good. Yeah. yeah. Be a good person, right? Yes. It's a good mantra to just get, am I being a good person right now? Yes. What am I doing? What am I doing this to? Yes. There's also realizing that, and this is hard. Like I'm one of those overly sensitive, compassionate. I might look big and intimidating mm-hmm. on the outside. And once you open me up, that's different. But um, and then, you know, once you open up or see someone pass the cover, but realizing that if you take everything personally, that's something to work on. Mm-hmm. But most people are doing the best they can do with the knowledge that they have. They're actually not trying to do wrong to us. They're yes. not trying to cut us off on purpose yes. or get one over our heads. Yes. That's a thing with ourselves that we have a conversation around. A hundred percent. Have you ever read the book, The Four Agreements? I sure have. I mean, that's you just said everything I feel like from that book. It's so true and it's so powerful. I mean, if we take everything personal, we're Aquarius. We're both Aquarius. Mm-hmm. And we're cool and easy, but like we're sensitive. Mm-hmm. So we ha- I have to remind myself often. I don't know if you do, but like what people are saying and they're doing is a projection of where they are, mm-hmm. period. So it's up to me to consume what they're giving me to feel a type of way, to allow it to affect me. Mm -hmm. I'm the only person that can allow any human to affect me, Mm -hmm. period. Like it's up to me if I let that in. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I feel like everything you said is so true. You have to know like what they're going, they're going through something right now and they're projecting from that space and they're doing their best. Mm -hmm. Can I curse? Yes. So my nieces and nephews, they're like 11 and eight and nine. And they're like, they, they're all play sports. We were all athletes. And whenever they go, go out and get ready for their game, I go, listen, do your best and fuck the rest. I said, they're like, auntie. But I'm like, no, because that's all you can do yeah. is your best at that time. And look, my best at 25 is a different best at 34. Mm-hmm. And guess what? My, my best at 40 will be completely different. So you have to have grace with humans on this earth. And not taking things personally, that's hard. It's hard, but it's a practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like everything's a practice in life. And the more you are able to ground in yourself and honor yourself and understand who you are, you wouldn't allow all of these outside, I call it noise, the distractions to affect you. Mm -hmm. But it's easier said than done. It's flexing that muscle. There's there's going to the gym every day and you know, pump the bicep, mm-hmm. do the squats, work on the booty. Yes. But there's a mental gym and a mental practice. Yes. And that includes breathing. Yes. Maybe writing some of this stuff down, having a conversation and really acknowledging like, look, I get buttered and it's okay. Mm-hmm. But in this moment, I shouldn't because that's not on me. Yes. And the self, the self-awareness too. That's key to life. I wish there was a pill for that. Yo, me too. Do you honestly, sometimes Ruben, when you are going through life, sometimes like I feel so self-aware. It makes me sick. Mm -hmm. Like I know I'm doing something and I know I shouldn't be, but I'm so self-aware. I'm like, but I I like it, but it might not be good for me, but I still like it. Mm -hmm. 
self-awareness is a, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And for me, sometimes a curse. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Yeah. Because you're owning it in that moment. Yeah. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Exactly. Hey, I'm going to stay up to the sunrise. I know it's going to hurt the next day. I'm choosing this, but yes. it's so much fun. Yes. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. but you're going to do it anyway. But that's the journey of life. It's all choices. We have the choice to decide. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's so much beauty in that. We have the power. Mm -hmm. We really sit down with ourselves. Yo, and the, the tools, which you just said, the tools, the breathing, the writing, the seeking help or therapy. You know, I think it's so beautiful mm -hmm. and it needs to be more of like a known activity, like exercising, mm -hmm. right? Like mental health exercising needs to be like on a day to day. And taking away the stigma around it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I go to a therapist. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Z and I go to therapy and we've done couples therapy. What's wrong with you guys? You guys are like perfect. I'm like, we're trying to do the work before it becomes a major problem or something. Yes. No one's perfect. Everything's about working on it. Yes. And we all get stuck in our own traumas that we're bringing to the table mm -hmm. and don't see it. Yes. And it's so beautiful that you guys, first of all, I love your wife, Z. Shout out to Z. I love you. Um, but I think that there's a space where another thing that society creates is a stigma that therapy is bad. Like there has to be something wrong with me. Why? Why is that bad? Even if there is something wrong with me, why is that bad? That I want to make my life better. You know, like, how, like we need to fix that idea that therapy or seeking help, there's a problem. No, there's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I just want to expand my knowledge. I want to become better. I want to make sense of what I'm going through. What about that? I think if we reframe it a little bit, there's two ways of asking why. Yeah. There's why out of genuine curiosity and trying to move it forward. Or there's why in the sense of like, well, I I don't want them to look like I'm broken or mm -hmm. unsuccessful or not happy with where I'm at. But what's wrong with that? We're yeah. all human. We're all human. And guess what? Why are we caring what X, Y, and Z thinks about us? That's another issue that we have that's as humans. Definitely an issue. That yeah, that's like the biggest human. Yeah. Like this fear of being judged by the outside world. Look, I always say, if they ain't paying my bills and loving me or taking care of me in a different type of way to build me spiritually, I don't care about X, Y, or Z's opinion at all. I'm taking that sound bite and I'm put it in my headphones and just put it on repeat. <laughs> yes, it's true though, but it's it's so natural for us to get caught up. We live in a world where we're like scrutinized every day, social mm -hmm. media, everything is just so like on you 24 seven. You know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has something to say. They have access to you. Everyone has access to you. So yeah. how do you build that armor? That's a great question. I've been told by a couple of different people, just doing powwows and like coaching conversations yeah. and thing. And someone's like, they actually just told me like, Ruben, you should be less available. Mm. And it, I just sat there and it landed for a moment because I replied to every comment. Mm. I, I replied to the DMs. Like I'm engaged in the yes. community, the audience that I'm trying to build. But at the same time, I can see now you can be too available and too, and it takes away from you. Yes. You can't replenish yourself. Yes. Which now that's another conversation. That's all about the glass being full because mm -hmm. your glass has to be full to do all this beautiful work. Mm -hmm. And if you're pouring all day long to each comment, yo, that's taking your energy. Mm -hmm. That's like taking all that water and you're going like this. So when you get to the studio, you're like on E, dude. When you want to go play with Remy, you're on E. I know. So I'm glad that whoever told you that, told you that. Mm -hmm. You're unavailable for a reason. It's because you have a glass that needs to stay full. You have a family. You have this beautiful brand that you're building. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad somebody told you that. That makes me happy. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and the beautiful thing we forget, like to continue there is many of us are really good at giving. Give, yeah. give, 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 give. But we forget to receive. Yes. Or don't receive a compliment. Yes. And just pawn it off like, oh, you're really pretty today. Yes. Oh, thank you. You are too. You just literally yes. pushed it away. That didn't fill my cup back Yes. Up. And it didn't fill up the person that originally yes. gave you the compliment. Like I had to learn that. Yes. And now realizing, hold on, let me take a beat. Yes. I think that's so beautiful. And I think women, a lot of women have a hard time dealing with that. I did. Women are naturally nurturers. We naturally give. That's a lot of, that's in a lot of our DNA. 
And I found myself in a space where I couldn't receive. I didn't know how to receive because I was always just taking care of people and doing all the things. Mm -hmm. And it's like a block. When you have that, it's like a block. Mm -hmm. You don't even acknowledge it. It just becomes like second nature. So really when you sit there and receive, and you have to learn how to receive. I had to learn how to receive. Oh, somebody can do for me what I do for everyone else. Mm -hmm. This feels weird as heck. But let me sit back and let me receive. That's a gift. And it's not easy. You're, when you're a giver, I mean, we give until we don't have anything in our cups. I've mm-hmm. done that most of my life. And I still do it sometimes, to be completely honest. But I think it has to be a mental, There, it's a mental block when you're not able to receive things. And you have to just sit down and ask yourself, why? Mm-hmm. So I think it's so beautiful. I mean, I did a lot of work in therapy with that mm-hmm. to get to the point of receiving. And sometimes I still struggle with it. So I'm glad that you can receive. I can, I can receive. I'm still working on like receiving everything that I desire, mm-hmm. that I deserve. Mm-hmm. So. No, it's again, another active practice. Yeah. But the way you said it is I can receive everything I deserve. Yes. But you're not saying it in a sense of like an egomaniac or a narcissist or a selfish person. You're not trying to take away from anyone else. You're Mm -hmm. like, look, I'm putting out so much good in the world. I deserve to fill my cup back up. Yes. I deserve to receive it back. Hell yeah, you do. One million percent. So so with women, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're working on sharing your voice and owning your voice. Yes. And men compete. Very physically, right? Mm-hmm. You can see it in sports all the time. It's very obvious. Look, I'm a one-up with you. I'm going to arm wrestle you. I'm going to this. But the way women compete is completely different. And at times, I think it's just some experiences, some examples that I've seen. It's it's almost really dirty and behind your back. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with some of that comparison and competition amongst women? I don't deal with it. I don't have to compete with any woman. Mm. And I truly believe that. Um you can only compete with somebody who thinks they're competing with you. Mm-hmm. You, And I say this with love. Like, I am in competition with no one but myself. Waking up every day facing myself and what I need to do, what I want to accomplish. I don't have time to worry about Sarah and Jessica down the street. Mm-hmm. I have so much I want to do, so much life to live, so many things I'm working on. I don't compete with anybody. I have seen this competition amongst women. Um, And it's unfortunate, but I feel like women in this patriarchal system that we all were raised in, they put us against each other. It's Mm -hmm. all a bigger part of this world that we live in, unfortunately. I can go down the whole rabbit hole of that, what I believe in. But, you know, I believe women are the most powerful creatures on this planet Earth. I back that. One million percent. And we are put, we're kind of like growing up the popular girl or this girl, like there's always like this weird, like, how do I say this? Like this war between like the the girls. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. I love women. I've always loved girls. And I was always an athlete. I always played sports. So I was on, I was always on teams of women all my life. I love women in every, every way possible. So I would never in a million years fight or compete. Only people that do that are people that have internal issues. Mm -hmm. A woman that's confident, a woman who knows who she is, they're not competing with nobody. We're helping each other. We're empowering each other. We're lifting each other up. Women are shoved down already by wages in society. Like we already have less chances. We already have less opportunity around the world globally too. It's even Mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. So I'll be damned. If any woman that I know that's around me, that's going to challenge somebody or put another woman down. No, because we need each woman here Mm -hmm. to rise with us. So I don't play that shit. Like nobody in my circle does that. We don't compete. There's no reason to compete. We uplift. And that's what I do with my podcast. Girl, we got this. You know, girl, we got this is a space where women can come and feel safe. Mm -hmm. And it was sad because I realized a lot of women don't have friends that empower them, that support them. They have those experiences where it's catty, it's nasty, it's Mm -hmm. conniving. And I'm like, bro, where are you getting these friends from? The people who I surround myself, that's not how we rock. Mm -hmm. You know, so I create that space 
for women and bring these women together because I'm like, yo, when women come together, magic happens. I believe that 1 million percent. So that's, I stand by that. I don't, I don't compete with not a damn woman. Amazing. Ever. So let's put you up on the pedestal and let them all know that. <laughs> like I can hear it. I'm feeling it. I can really come. But that question you asked is a lot of women don't have friends or yeah. the quality of friends. I know my wife and her group of friends, I know that it comes from the same cloth you're cut from. Yeah. Right? They're empowering each other. They're supporting yes. each other. And now that I have a son and I'm a father, like I see, and my wife's mom, I see the mom bullying and the mom shaming, mm. or if Z's open about something, it's like, oh, you shouldn't do it. Like, like the unsolicited advice. Yes. yes. Like, I don't see that on the father side. Interesting. I haven't been, I didn't receive anything like that. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, you're tired or you're this. Like, let's go like yeah. ignore the family and yeah. get some drinks, something yeah. like that. But there's none of the the jabs and the undertone. And you're not doing it enough. Yeah. You're a bad mom if you say that. Like, and I and I see how it affects Z. She's mm -hmm. definitely not a bad mom at all, or a bad person. I'm like, why does that hit so hard? Yeah, and it affects her. I'm sure. First of all, don't ever come for Z. <laughs> First of all, I'm telling the people this: don't come for Z because she's amazing. But. People don't have nothing better to do but to bring people down, unfortunately. And I don't really know what that is, male versus female. I don't really know. But I feel like even when growing up and being in certain spaces in life, I saw men work together so much easier and faster and quicker than I saw women. It's like this competition because, you know, when the supply, there's like a big supply and then there's like a low demand. So like there's like this big supply. No, there's a low demand for women. So everybody's trying to get it right. Like everybody's trying to run the way, like get their way up instead of like working together to mm -hmm. get there because it's so limited, the space for women. And I feel like that mentality sometimes bleeds through how people live their life. Like you have nothing better to do, but to comment something negative. Mm -hmm. Also, this is my life. Like I'm not living my life for you. That's the issue with social media. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's more like that with women and men. It's unfortunate. But to those women and those people that are commenting, like they just don't have nothing better to do and they have too much time on their hands. And behind a screen, like keyboard warrior syndrome. I can't. And all of a sudden people are flexing because if they were I right can't. next to you in the same room, they wouldn't say anything. Ever. Ever. I would never respond. This just happened to my homegirl actually the other day. I was at dinner last night with her. And she said she posted something about she, she's a she's a mom and very healthy, very similar to Z's lifestyle. And she was bloating. She was bloated. And all of a sudden, like she got it cured and then she posted in and out. And this woman was like, oh, my God, why are you doing that? And then like this is like defeating the case of what you're doing. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like, I can reward myself and have a burger. It's OK. And I was like, people do this. I'm like, people will have this much time mm -hmm. and it's all judgment. That's not love. Mm -hmm. So I don't really fuck with that. But it's projecting. It's still having yeah. the tools that people are projecting and yes. bringing their stories into your story. Yes. But then we take it on. Yes. But how do you build that shield around you so you don't take it on? It's a great question. I meditate. That's how what I do. Cause I, I always know when I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Like I can feel it. Mm -hmm. I can feel it in my eyes. I can feel it like in my body and I'll have to, I'll step away and I'll go meditate. And sometimes I have a guided meditation and sometimes I'm just by myself and I get outside mm -hmm. and I have no shoes and I'm just sitting there and breathing for like 10 to 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll go for two hours. Cause I'm like, you we get so caught up in this life. We're not here for, for all of this madness. I'm not here for social media. I'm not even here to work. I'm here to experience life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm here to experience this journey of life through this lifetime as a spiritual being. So we get caught up in the madness, this rat race of society, this rat race of who's who and what we're, who's doing, what we're producing. No, mm -hmm. like what matters to you? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be sitting there worrying about what, somebody's commenting in my posts, in my message. I do not care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I always do this. I meditate and I, and I imagine a purple shield around me. 
Nothing can touch it. And if it does, I allowed it to. So guess what? It's not that person's fault. It's my, it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility to maintain my energy. My energy is fucking awesome. I know that. I've worked on myself a yeah, lot. I'm trying to get closer. <laughs> I'll share. I'll send it your way. You have to protect your energy at all costs. Because if you let each comment, each DM affect you, your day is going to be tainted. Mm-hmm. Maybe our time on this earth is limited. Why are we allowing someone we don't even know to affect us? It's a million dollar question. Why? With everything. We could apply that to a lot of things. Everything. I also think people don't realize that they can protect themselves. Yes. Or they don't think of it as loving themselves. Again, mm-hmm. I, I do a lot of this work, but it's really about self-love. Yes. Because when you love you yes. thoroughly, yes. everything else happens. Everything. We just forget about us. Mm-hmm. And then we try to make these things. And some things can pop off yes. and do this and that. But then there's going to be this gap in this hole. And we're going to fill it with, I used to fill it with lots of shoes mm-hmm. and diamond watches and big old rims on my truck. <laughs> before I lose it all and not have the money to buy all that. I'm like, wait, yeah. I'm still me. I didn't protect myself during that time. I yes. just gave money to everyone. I was more sharing with it because, yes. hey, what's the use of having all this money if you're the one at the top by yourself? It's so true. So protective measures. So you put on this purple shield. You meditate. Yeah. What other practices do you do? I journal often, like every morning and every night. And I'm practicing this new thing. It's I don't. So a good friend of mine, they own this incredible bagel shop. It's called Cur- Courage Bagels. It's in Silver Lake. It's the best bagel you ever have in your life. Trust me when I tell you this. And I know if you're from New York, they're from New York. So it's really good. Well, going to Silver Lake's like me going to New York, basically. Oh, my God. Oh, you're so dramatic. <laughs> Why are people like this? It's only an LA thing. LA thing, y'all cannot drive. I'm going to go get some. I'm born and bring raised some. here. I know. That's why. I'm used to driving 45. I like to drive. I'll bring you some. And you'll Please. be like, yeah, I'll be like, I'll go to New York and I come, I'll come back. For Z, but I'll bring it for you. Um, I know you'll bring it to her. I'll just grab <laughs> one if I get home fast enough before she eats them all. They're so good. He taught me, Chris, he taught me this idea of lucid dreaming. And I started doing this. It's really cool. So every night before I go to bed and every morning, right? Because that's when like your subconscious, that's when like kind of you're less distracted. It's just you and your body. Mm -hmm. Being still is hard for humans. It's not easy. Your mind being still is one of the hardest things to master. So every night before I go to sleep, I envision, like I feel myself, I smell, I hear how I want my life to be. Mm. Like I see myself where I want to be. I see my house that I desire. I see the partner that I desire, how, like how his hug feels when he hugs. Like I, I do, I started doing this, started the last week and it's wildly cool because you start seeing these things The more you can embody what you want and visually see it and feel it, it all comes to life. Mm-hmm. It's magic. Cause we're, I don't come from much. I come from a small town. We didn't have a lot of money. And then I see where I am now. And I, I remember all these things that I remember doing growing up. I used to sign my name because I wanted to be in the WNBA. I played basketball. I used to practice my sitting. I used to do all these things. I used to be like, one day my my face is going to be in like Times Square. And all this shit's happened. Mm -hmm. So I believe in this idea. So this lucid dreaming thing, I don't know if it's actually called lucid dreaming or if it's another term for it, but that's what I started doing. And it's really, really beautiful. I also love like sound baths. Mm -hmm. Um, I really, really enjoy women's circles. Um, that's, those are like some tools. I do therapy. I believe in therapy. I take breaks often. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like having a soundboard for my life. It helps. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can get overwhelming. So I break, but then like when I'm ready, I go back in. I do what feels good for me. And I'm a nature girl. Like I try to go to the ocean every night if I can and sit and just be and just stare or write. I bring my books everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. You know, it, and it sounds like, where do you find the time? Where do you make the time? You right? have to. Make it a routine. Make yes. it part of your day. Yes. Because we all have the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. We don't know when it'll end though. Right? Yes. Life is finite. We don't know the expiration yes. date, but we can all make things happen. You know, it's the excuse of I'm too busy. I'm too busy. 
And I'm like, I'm busy. I know mm-hmm. what busy is, mm-hmm. but there's some non-negotiable. I go to the gym every day, no matter what. That's yeah. how I start my day. That's yeah. part of my routine. Right. And it's just incorporating some of these other practices. That busy word, you're absolutely right. That busy word drives me wild. Like I, I started to use it so much and I was like, I had to cut it out. So I use productive. I'm, I'm really productive today. Like I had to change because words are powerful. Our mm-hmm. tongue is powerful. Everything we do in this vessel of ours, it's so powerful. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm so productive today. If I can't make it to the ocean, it's okay. I had a productive day. You know what I mean? And guess what? I'll make it, I'll make it tomorrow. But you have to make time for what you really want. Mm-hmm. And yo, know, we prioritize what we want in this life. Every single human being does that. It's all a choice. Mm-hmm. How do you want to experience this life? You know, I think we all go through different phases and we all go through different parts, but that's the journey of life. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So I'm wearing this cool hat. Yes. Right. Tell me about this hat. Tell me about this next journey. Yes. The entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Okay. So this happened by default because I'll, the true story, like true story is super short. I used to date this guy and he used to rush me Ruben for every, like everything. And I'd be like, bro, I need like 10 minutes to diffuse my curls. Just throw on a hat. I'm like, bro, I can't throw on a hat. Look at my hair. Mm-hmm. If I grab the regular hat, I would not, this would not fit. I'd have like a crease. It would ha- go like, it would look ridiculous. A lot of people are still walking around looking ridiculous with hats that don't fit. And it drives me fucking crazy when I see it. So I remember I looked at him, he was in the restroom and I was like, I'm just going to design a hat that like, that's like, that fits us. I can't be the only one with an issue. And he looked at me like I was crazy. It took me three years. I designed a hat. I didn't go to school. I didn't know what I was doing. I lost a lot of money along the way. Um, but I was like, okay, I just need a design. I need to find somebody that can create a prototype, found something online. I had the design. They didn't send me the money, whatever. I, at least I had a picture. Then from the picture, I was like, okay, I want these fabrics. So as an athlete, I played softball and I played basketball. But in softball, you have to wear a hat. I hated wearing the hats in softball with my curly hair. It, it would look crazy when I would take it off. And I'm like, yo, like we never had products growing up for like our textured hair, Mm -hmm. like for people of color, like hats, like we didn't have products for our hair period. And when it came to this hat, I was like, I'm going to make a hat for us. So it took me three years, designed it. It's called Tress. Um, Tress means a long lock of hair. And I designed a hat specifically for our texture. So the design, it's this beautiful way. I call it, it protects your crown. We all have a beautiful crown. You need to protect it. So it's satin lined. It's designed a little um, higher in the in the crown, and then we, we have like three bands in the back, so you can literally put your hat on like it's like a ponytail holder. So like a lot of women we know, you have long hair too. Mm-hmm. Like when you have hats, like your hair sits on the back of your neck and it's sweaty and nasty. I mm-hmm. hate that feeling. So I made this hat. So like it sits where your ponytail should sit, in like the center of the back of your head. So I can work out with it. I can sweat in it. I can look cute in it. I can do it day to day. There's never hats made for us. So I just made one. And now it's like a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going into Nordstrom's. We're doing some big collabs this year and it's really exciting. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I like to design and empower women, you know? And I think growing up, I didn't have that. You know, I, I, I'm I'm mixed and I grew up in a very small white town. Mm -hmm. I try to straighten my curls all my life. I try to look like all these, you know, just as you do growing up, like you don't see you in Elser. So you try to like blend in. And I did that. And when I fell in love with my curls in my twenties, I was like, first of all, the boys love it. Sec, I, that was like the biggest, I was like, oh my God, this is like a thing. And it's sad that I had to do that to get there. Cause I now like with my nieces, I make sure we have curl days. We have curl festivals when I go home mm. so that I didn't have to be accepting of my curls because the boys love it. It was in college when I was like, oh shit, I can wear it out and they go crazy. I'm like. Yeah, it was, I remember my buddies and I, oh, the curly hair. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like a yeah, thing. Yeah, it was always, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that because from where I'm from, it wasn't a thing in my small town in Massachusetts. So, you know, having products for us is so empowering and it's just, it's a beautiful thing to see young girls embracing who they are Mm -hmm. because our hair is a part of us. Depending on where you're from, your heritage, like it speaks volumes of who I am. 
-hmm. when you see us walking, like, it's like, we come in a lot of attention from our hair alone. Never mind who we are. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So there's so much power. We just needed products that celebrate that. So So there's also another thing here, because you were talking when you were young, Mm -hmm. you were altering your look Mm -hmm. to create the identity you thought was acceptable. Yes. Pushing yourself down. Mm -hmm. That's like putting on a new mask. Yes. 100%. And and then you're like, let me embrace these things. Yes. The boys liked it. I learned. Wow. Why did it take me so long to learn that? Yeah. But now you're you. It's more freeing and more freedom. So you're really looking at solving the problem. Again, going back to self-love, going back to identity, authenticity, own who you are. And I'm going to try to fill the space for you. Yes. I want to fill the space for you. I don't want you straightening your beautiful curls. There's so much beauty in your natural texture. There's so much beauty in who you are. But in order for us to just wear a hat, we have to brush them flat or straighten our hair. We ain't doing that no more. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not, we're not doing that. Trust alleviates that problem. So that's how my baby was born. Amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about some conversations of self-doubt and starting a business, mm-hmm. right? What were some self-doubts? What were some things that kept you from starting it sooner? Yeah. Um, Because I heard, I'm not a designer and I just did this. So I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not know what I was doing. You know what? I wasn't, I have to say being an athlete instilled a lot of character and this fight inside of me where I knew failing, I had to fail in order to win. So I don't have this, doubt in me. It's this really weird. I truly, Ruben, I believe I can do anything. I just have to practice Mm -hmm. because growing up, I wasn't the best basketball player. Like my older sister was it, but I would be in the gym at 6 a.m. before class. After the games, I'd be in the gym after because I wanted to be great. And it got me a scholarship to college. So in my head, I know I will outwork anyone when I really love something. So when it came to the hat, I was like, okay, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I didn't. I didn't know how to design. I didn't know how to draw. I didn't know how to even put fabrics together. I was like, how do I do step one? I always tell people, ask for help. That's something that took me a while to learn too. So I remember when I started the journey, I asked my homeboys for help. I was like, how do you do this? He was like, you need a prototype. Okay. How do I find a prototype? Google. That's what I did. I Googled, found a prototype went along the way. When you start anything new, it's like walking. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. Mm-hmm. You see Rem how he gets up, but he's going to get back up and try again and mm-hmm. get back up. It's hard as an adult to remember that. If you start something new, it's not going to be a walk in the park and it's okay. You have to fail to win. Jordan has this quote and it says, what's this quote, Ruben? It's like, um, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, mm-hmm. period. I'm shooting. I'm always shoot. The only people that's judging you are the people that aren't doing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about, again, I'm not worried about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try. If I fail, it's okay. But I tried, so I'm going to be proud of myself for that. Everything I do is not good. Everything I do is not perfect. It doesn't exist. But it's going to be good enough. And that's all that matters if you put your heart into it. And I mm-hmm. think that's what we forget about. Like, what's your intention? Yeah. You know, I knew what my intention was with my hat. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I wanted to solve a problem that I had, and I couldn't have been the only one to do it. Mm -hmm. So it took me three years to make a hat. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a journey. Creating is a journey. And patience, I think that's the key. The key to life, especially in entrepreneurship. You have to be patient with yourself. Cause you're going to mess up. You're going to be like, oh, there's so much challenges along the way that you're going to deal with. There's so much loss you're going to deal with, but you have to have that warrior mentality, like Mm. fall down a get up 10 type thing. Like, Mm -hmm. and I'm used to it. I'm used to losing. I lost all my life playing games, but we won, we won, we won big. You know, I know what it felt like to be undefeated, to be a champion. We did that. Mm -hmm. Like, so I have this cool gift in me from being an athlete that it's like, I'm not afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm going to learn and I'm going to keep going. And yeah, I get sad and I cry. 
That's what I do. Like I cry. I'll cry at night. I can literally cry thinking of something. I can get mm. emotional, but I release it. And I'm like, okay, if it's too much for me today, I'll pick it up tomorrow. You have to be patient with yourself and have compassion for yourself. Like you have for everybody else. Cause it's not an, e it's not an easy road in entrepreneurship. It's very lonely too. Sometimes. Oh, I know. Right. It's lonely, but like I'm on the, I'm on the part where I'm trying to build a team. And that's hard too. That's another part of the journey, mm -hmm. building a team. And now you're just like, all right, let's go. So it's like Super Mario. You get to the next level. You get to the next level. You just keep going. You can reset the game if you have to reset it. Mm -hmm. Start from scratch. But put that button back up and you start again. You know, I think that's, that's, that's the difference from normal and extraordinary. The people that just keep going because mm -hmm. it's not easy. Look, some days it's not easy just to wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, the world we're going through, like what we just went through with the shooting again in tech, like that shit is hard. I can't imagine being a parent right now. Not cool. Nah, I can't I just, imagine. I put myself in their shoes and I, I would be devastated. I, yes. I don't even know. Yes. It's not easy. Day to day, you got to get up and we're dealing with the world shit, global war. And then our personal life work like be easy it's it's you have to be easy on yourself and mm -hmm. have an intention with every part of your life i think that's the only way that that's what keeps me going to be honest yeah what's going on now with the shootings with the fear we just came out of a pandemic mm -hmm. there's just a lot of a lot of fear in the world. And I always say we can either operate out of love or we can operate out of fear. Yes. Everything you've been talking about is literally choosing fear and mm -hmm. choosing self. And let's be gentle on ourselves and let's move forward from that. Because if we don't do it to ourselves, no one's going to do it for us. Yes. Right? Own your power. Keep it. Um, athletic mindset. Athletic mm -hmm. mindset, it's huge. So you, I always think all of us that have played sports, yes. there's a whole other level of camaraderie accountability yes. we have to show up for our teammates yes like we get that and i think yes. everyone should play sports for just that i totally agree right and even if you look at put the top best of the best of the best athletes in the world mm -hmm. let's just say they're all equal mm -hmm. how does one compete for the other when you're already the best by putting in the work yeah. and by practicing because talent's only going to get you so far you got to be willing to put in the work yes that's the key so, yeah, it's just, this is what I'm hearing you say. And it's like, this is all meaty. This yeah. is all juicy. <laughs> so, so what are three bullet points, three takeaways that you would give the five-year-old, the seven-year-old, the 12-year-old girl that's looking up to you right now and just seeing what you're doing? Well, I think to you, Let's just be 100, live through love. I think that's one thing I tell any young girl is live through love. Like live through love, like see somebody and love somebody for who they are. Live every day by loving things, not to see the negative, not to be drawn down by the sadness, not to be, you know, feel of all this, the weight of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to kind of externally learn how to live through love. So to Ruben, I would, I would definitely say that to a young girl, like you have to learn and it's a learning, it's a learn how mm -hmm. to live through love. Cause it's so easy to live through fear. It's easy to live through pain. It's easy to live through being a victim. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's way easy. It's easy. Too many people are doing it. No, that's not what we're doing. I would tell every woman to live through love. Cause that's actually hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to live through love and it's not an easy thing. But once you do, you sleep so good at night. It's peace. Like for me, as a woman, peace over everything. Mm -hmm. I want a peaceful life. Um, I'd also tell a young girl is to love themselves truly, madly, deeply mm -hmm. before anyone else loves you. Um, I think that's something that I learned the hard way growing up. You know, we always are looking for other outside things, especially a woman to validate us, how we look, how we dress, our boyfriend, if we have a partner, um, having babies, there's so much pressure on us mm -hmm. as women. And so until you learn who you are, take time for yourself. 
You don't need a man. You don't need a partner. And if you do, that's fine. Whatever you desire is fine, but know who you are first. Love yourself first. Learn how to love yourself. Take yourself out. Go have fun with yourself. Write to yourself. You know what I mean? Like do all these things self so you know how you want to actually be loved. Mm -hmm. So when you're ready to truly love and to be in love with somebody or something or in a career, you know what your expectations are. I would definitely say that. And I think the third thing I would say to a young girl is to don't take no for an answer. I don't believe in no. Um, and this is career wise, like as a woman, a career woman, as an entrepreneurial woman, as a woman with dreams, no is just, that's not the time right now. And that's not who I need to be working with. No is not the end. Mm -hmm. No is like, okay, next. You know, I think a lot of us get defeated when we are told no as women and no doesn't exist. No is just somebody being like next. Next, keep going. I want every young girl to know to keep going. There's going to be yes, and you can do it. You know, a lot of us just need to be seen and we need to be heard and we need someone else to believe in us. And it'll all come, but you have to just keep going. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Three things. Perfect. Yeah. With the nose, I've been in sales my whole life. So mm -hmm. rejection is a thing you really start dealing with. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, to, to switch the mindset, it's like, I'm collecting no's. I'm collecting no's. Because yes. the sooner I amass however many no's I need, that yes is coming. It's yes. right around the corner. Yes. And let me tell you, I always say this. What's for you will not pass you by. Mm. What's for me will never pass me by. And if it passed me by, guess what? It wasn't for me. God, universe, whatever you believe in, did not want that for you. There's something bigger and better coming. But you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to force it, I did that. I forced so much shit in my past. Mm -hmm. And now coming on the other side, I'm like, oh, if I just be and just be patient and know like it's coming, life, life just lifes. And I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be like water. Look how water moves. Be like water. Have you read that book? No. It's so good. I'm like, I'm going to bring it to you. Okay. With the bagels. Let's do it. It's a good ass book. Bruce Lee. Be Like Water. It's a Bruce Lee quote. And actually his daughter wrote it. It's a really good book. Be Like Water. Mm -hmm. Discipline. I'll definitely look it up. Yeah. Send it to me. I will read I got you. I read whatever people send me. Yeah. Um, but I heard you say one thing. And then I'm going to ask you one final question. Okay. But you were saying, don't force it. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way I can relate to this is when you force that night out, your life with your friends, you're like, oh, let's just. You don't feel like going, you don't want to do anything, but you still force it, right? You can hear the conversation, of yeah. like, but we're single. This is the only way we're going to meet <laughs> someone or we're this, we got to get out there. And it becomes like, it's the worst night ever. Yeah. And you're just chasing, chasing, chasing. Yeah. And that can happen. So that's the way I apply. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, yeah. Because I have forced too many bad nights. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I do not force things. <laughs> that's hilarious. You know, what's funny. And this is weird. When I'm tired or something, or when I'm like, I'm single. So like, I need to go out and meet people. Mm -hmm. But I have days and so I have long days. So I'm like, I'm not going out. But when I make myself go, I always have the best time. Mm. So I don't, I don't, I don't. That's a little bit different, I think. Because you're not it? forcing it now. Yeah. You're making yourself go. You're rallying to the yes. occasion. Yes. But you're already saying, I already know that I'm going to have a good time. Yes. Or I have a track history yes. of this. What I mean by forcing it is like you go to dinner, mm -hmm. you have a good time, but then like for some reason I see the venue closes and you're like, oh, let's take it here. And then let's take it there. And all of a sudden it's spiraled out of control. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. That force night yeah. just becomes something it's true. else. But rallying because you're like, I'm tired. Tired yeah. is not an excuse to. You're right. To Girls are good at rallying though. We, we can rally. All I need is one of my sisters to be like, dress heels. All right. They'll be at the house. I'm like, all right, let's go. Get your hair done. They'll do my hair. I'm ready. My nails done. I'm ready. It's a team effort. Rally. It's always a team effort. That's what I mean. Like my homegirls are like, that's like family. I like a good rally. There you go. Yeah. So the final question is, you, you touched on it earlier. Mm -hmm. There's different ways to define love. Yes. So how would you define love? 
You know, I read a book by Bell Hooks. It's called All About Love. I suggest this book to everyone. It's a really beautiful insight on what love is. I also like to tell people to like, When you read books, like for me, when I take advice from anyone, I'm always looking through the eyes of that person, that point of view. Like she's a black feminist, powerful woman from New York that wrote this book. So I could relate to a lot of what she was writing in this book. And it was, it's a, it's a beautiful book and how she defined love was a person uplifting you in your spiritual journey, like uplifting you into becoming a better human in this spiritual world, in this vessel that we, in this time that we have on this lifetime. For me, I define love in many different ways, but I think for me, love is this sense of, I think love for me is like a sense of safety. Love for me is a sense of safety where I feel safe in somebody's presence or in a space or with whoever I'm around or if I'm at work or love. It's like a safe space where I can feel supported, not judged, um, seen for who I truly am, empowered Mm -hmm. and uplifted. I think that's what love is for me. Love is unconditional Love is beautiful. Love is a journey too. Love isn't always easy. Mm -mm. You know, love can be hard. You know, being seen sometimes in phases of my life is hard. Mm -hmm. Like when I look back and I reflect and I do the work, I'm like, who was like, who was she? Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard to look at yourself sometimes, but you have to love yourself Mm -hmm. because that's love, you know? So that's kind of an elongated version, but I think love is everything. I think love is what we need more of. And I think love is the only reason why we're here on this earth mm. is to love. And I pray that we get more of it. And with what you're doing, Ruben, it's so dope. You know, you literally embody the word love. So I'm thankful for your impact that you're doing Thank you. on this planet. You're welcome. So love is the answer. Love is always the answer, isn't it? Yeah, but you are love. I am. So you're the answer. I'm the answer. I am the answer. Mm-hmm. Alan Iverson, the answer. Yeah. I believe that. I'm going to, I receive that. Mm. Yeah. I am love. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your voice. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And where can our listeners find you? Well, you guys can find me on Instagram at Letitia.roll is my Instagram handle. And then my hats are at tressforus.com. And our podcast is coming back out. It's called Girl, We Got This. And that's on all podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. So you can find me there. Can't wait to talk to all of you. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Z. Love you. (laughs) All the shout outs to Z. Z Rojas. (laughs) 